joining us now. First of all, you know, the Braves, some of this in baseball is crazy. Not like it's luck, but it's crazy. So the Astros had Charlie Morton, and he's like, you know, 37, 38-year-old. And they're like, yeah, we don't need Charlie Morton. And he goes over to Atlanta, and he's starting tonight against his former teammate. They also made it, you know, these, these deadline trades, a lot of them are, they don't pay off. And they went and got, you know, Atlanta went and got Eddie Rosario from the tri- Twins. He's been a huge get. So is it when you, when you sort of look at the Braves, we know they're well run. Some of it is, you know, I mean, would you have picked them? early in the year to be here. What do you make of the Braves' path to get here? Hey, Colin, full disclosure, before this year started, I picked the Braves to win the World Series. <laughs> now, I got to tell you, I did that thinking that Ronald Acuna Jr. would be the MVP. Right. And here he misses virtually a whole year, right? Blows out his knee. So you, you touched on something really interesting. The Braves are not here without the trade deadline, right? They went all year trying to replace Acuna. They couldn't do it. Trade deadline, they start – you know, looking at the bargain bin shelf for outfielders, Jock Peterson, Eddie Rosario, Jorge Soler, Adam Duvall, completely redid their outfield on the fly at the trade deadline. Lo and behold, they played great the last two months. Yeah. And you look at the team they're playing here, the Astros, who really struggled bullpen-wise, trade deadline, they go get Ryan Stanek, Phil Maton, Kendall Graveman. And most fans are going, who? Like, we're all looking at Scherzer and Turner, blockbuster deals, right? Just goes to show you at the trade deadline – it's those finishing pieces. Neither one of these teams would be here without those trade deadline moves. Astros bullpen, Atlanta outfield. Yeah. By the way, you know, Charlie Morton's funny. There, there are these guys that I just trust. I said this two weeks ago. If Charlie Morton's going in a big game, you just kind of feel like he'll, he'll be fine. There'll be no chaos. He'll get you to the seventh inning. Why did, why did the Houston let him go? I don't, was it a cost thing? Was it an age thing? Well, first of all, Houston turned his career around. I mean, this guy had uh, a four or five ERA career wise, 36 years old, was coming, it blew out his hamstring the year before. He thought, nobody's going to want me. Astros wanted him because he could spin a curveball. And they told him, Charlie, you got to throw your curveball more. And he basically doubled it. And it's one of the best curveballs in the game. Watch the game tonight. You'll see that. It's actually two of the best Valdez for Houston and Morton for the Astros. Ton of great curveballs tonight. So they turned his career around. And each year, Charlie was like, yeah, I may want to retire. He's got kids at home. He's getting in his late 30s. (laughs) And it was about comfort then, about being close to home. He lives in Florida. The Braves train right near where his his home is. So give the Astros credit for turning this guy around. And I'm totally in agree with you, with you, Colin, here. Charlie Morton may not be the biggest name. When it comes to biggest games, I, he's on my list of five guys I would trust the most to handle that game and pitch well. Yeah. So, listen, the Astros, you know, I was, I was telling somebody the other day, I, we, we got into this discussion. I said, you know, aggressive wins in sports. And we know what the Astros did, but they didn't give up the World Series. And here they are with all these great players. And in the end, they're a little bit of a villain. And I understand it. And every sport's got them. And we, we can talk about the past. But in the end... Last five years, you can make an argument, it's the best baseball team. It's the best, if you start stacking up the last five years, is there a secret sauce to the Astros? Uh, you know, everybody's, oh, they're cheaters. People say that about the Patriots. You get that a lot, right? So, I mean, in the end, you got to win games. You got to win road games. You got to win series. Here's Houston again. Give me a little bit, for somebody that doesn't follow baseball religiously, what is it about this entity that keeps ending up in these big games and winning these big series yeah well i would take it one step further you have to win yeah on the road during the regular season you have to win in october and it's a different kind of baseball in october right you're seeing the best pitchers the best teams the astros have two things why they keep getting back here to the world series to me number one they put the ball in play right this team strikes out the lowest rate in major league baseball we've seen it throughout this postseason Colin. this team is just racking up a ton of runs with two outs So these pitchers can't get the third strike. They can't get their team off the field because up and down the lineup, these guys are going to battle you. They're going to put the ball in play. Watch these games. You won't see a ton of shifts when the Astros are batting. Why? Because they use the whole field. So that's number one. And now you're talking about supreme experience. And you can't tell me that 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 doesn't matter in these big spots. It's sort of like the Yankees in the late 90s. They've been through every circumstance that you can imagine. I've seen this team play poorly. I've seen Altuve have a bat at bat, comes back the next bat, hits a home run. Nothing phases this team. And it's sort of like a college football team, a college football coach who makes great halftime adjustments. The Astros do that in the course of these games. 
I mean, look, the Red Sox were the hottest team on the planet in the postseason. All of a sudden, they stopped hitting. And Alex Cora, I asked them, I said, what happened to your club? And he said, what happened was Brent Strom, the Astros pitching coach, and Martin Maldonado, the catcher. They just made adjustments in the middle of game four. Series completely changed. So that's what the Astros do. They put the ball in play. They're so smart. They've been through these wars. So they may have a bad game here or there, or even a bad inning. It doesn't phase them at all. Yeah, I, I, I kind of I have a soft spot for Atlanta because the town really loves. They got a lot of sports in Atlanta, but the the team that's closest to the heart of that city is the Braves, and it has been for years. And part of that is because of losing, because they lost so many big series that emotionally people have been so sucked into the Braves for years, and they've been so disappointed that there's this. You know, they've been very back to the Sherholtz days. They've always been a really well run franchise and they've and they've been so close. They haven't won a title since ninety five. So part of me is like, I'd like and they lost their star players. Part of me is like, I'd like to see Atlanta win it. This would be great. Your gut feeling on what the series will look like if you lean either way. Well, I think they have a couple of things in their favor, the Braves do. First of all, you know, American League rules here for the first couple of games in Houston all these bats we talked about that they traded for in the outfield, they put another in the lineup, right? With the DH, you probably see Soler as the DH. They now have an American League lineup playing in American League rules. Then they go to Atlanta, and I think the National League rules really help the Braves because the Astros are going to have to play Michael Brantley and Jordan Alvarez in the same outfield with probably Kyle Tucker in center field. So that's an advantage for the Braves. Also, I was talking to Walt Weiss. He's you know been there forever. He said the crowds at Truist Park, and maybe this gets back to what you're talking about, McCollin, are so much louder and have so much more energy than the crowds at Turner Field, which were great. But he said it's a whole different level. So when you've waited, what, 22 years for the World Series, you've got it first time in the new ballpark, there's a hunger there. So I, I think the ballpark will help them. The rules will help them. Bottom line here, Colin, is that the Braves are going to win this World Series. They're going to win it with their three lefties in the back of their bullpen, right? It's going to be Minter, Matzik, and Smith. Hitters are hitting a buck 14 off them this postseason. Brian Snicker goes to them a lot. You have the two off days in the series where you can afford to do that. If the Astros are going to win, they're going to have to beat those guys late. It's a very unique circumstance with three. Their best three relievers are all left-handed. It doesn't matter. They got lefties and righties. We've seen this postseason, Colin. It's really been about relief pitching. 31 postseason games, starting pitchers have won only 11 games. Wow. Two out of every three postseason games are decided by bullpens. So we talk all about the starting pitchers, but really it's bullpens who decide. And for the Braves, I really like their back end. Braves Astros, 730 Fox. Great seeing you. We'll be watching tonight, bud. Love it. Thanks, Colin. You bet, Tom. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.